Hey yo, everybody, my name is Ferby2 and welcome back to Hawkeye Star Rail for new content and a new story. Now, in the last time I did any of these Hawkeye Star Rail videos, we were on the final chapter of Panacone. And I guess um, involved in other shenanigans with the Sparkle. We met with friends that we came along the journey of Panacone with. And we find, uh, meet another head of the family, which is, uh, I guess, uh, O.T. Old Man O.T., which looked like a, the giant, I guess the green-shirted Santa Claus. Not sure what the hell. And we have our own freaking cruise ship in Patagonia. And we were allowed to customize it, name it, and whatnot. And uh, we might have a potential relationship with Firefly, but that goes for all main characters, to be honest. And I was lucky enough to get Star uh, Firefly and Jade as well. Now, before I move on, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and my content as well. If you truly do, please like and subscribe and comment on anything you wish to desire. So, let's go ahead and check out what's in the travel log. Now, in the travelogue, we got a new brand new story. We are in, we're going to be returning to the Jianzhou Lo Fu for a event of, of some event in the game called the War Dance or whatever. With the introduction of the new character, Yun Li, as we've seen in the Aptitude Showcase here, Yun Li has a unique um, mechanic. Let's just say that she that depends on her ability to parry attacks and the timing of her ultimate. I I, I honestly want to show you it a bit, but I feel like I want to try to pull for not only her, but the return of Hua Hua. And she is a critical healer that I need on my team, and which is why I am going to spend a pretty penny on this one, as well as getting this one. Her ultimate is sick, though. I could show you real quick, but I probably will probably um, put that in another video. So, and another event that comes in after this. So, this is the saga of Primaval, Prime, Primaveral Blade. This is also another character that we can get for free if we manage to do this. Now, we can have an early access, apparently. So, this is a new feature called Finality's Vision. Trailblazers can participate in events before meeting their pre-requested conditions in advance, since you would be experiencing the events in advance. It may have an impact on the story and gameplay experience to some extent. Now, you know me. I like to experience the story from beginnings, and I don't want to skip it because of this. Short explanation we can get uh, her whole eidolons three eidolons i believe so it can be attained by completely complete three different endings i do believe and um we can get her unique little text chat box i believe that we can customize it on and more of her eidolons and more of some sort of um i guess ascension and Ascension material as well as trace material. And she is on the path of the hunt, and she is an imaginary character, which is freaking cool in her design. She looks absolutely adorable. But I also like to say that there is more options in the tools, too. So we're going to go ahead and deal with the story first before I blabber on. So, so we're here in the Express. And the reason why my music ain't playing is because of this thing. And Black Swan's here. I should check on her first, but let's go ahead and investigate. You have an interstellar message. Please check it promptly. That's what I keep getting. Hmm. What is it? Yeah. What is it? What's that, Pom Pom? Uh, just got a message from the Xian Shou La Fu. Looks like it'll conflict with our original schedule. So we're not gonna be traveling to wherever Black Swan wants us to go. Yeah. 
Ah. It's been a while, my friends on the Astral Express. How's your trailblazing expedition going? It's Jing Yuan. I hope I said it right. <laughs> Soon, the Xianzhou Law Fu will be holding the Luminary War Dance. Those who have aided the Law Fu in overcoming the crisis are cherished allies of the Xianzhou. Thus, on behalf of the Seat of Divine Foresight, I'm extending an invitation to attend the ceremony. Your presence would be greatly appreciated. That's cool. Well, things are getting lively. We've barely recovered from the family's Charmony Festival, and we're already being invited to another special event. Hey, that's pretty damn sweet. Alright, with everything that we went through from attending the false dream to nearly fighting the reincarnation, almost a new reincarnation of a dead Aeon, I'd say it was pretty fun. But I'm still recovering from the trauma caused by the last festivity. Uh, but, most importantly, trailblazing is all about having fun, right? Why not think about it this way? Our trailblazing expeditions are turning into blast expeditions, where we eat, drink, and play wherever we go. Okay, so, first of all, we went to a frozen planet that nearly destroys everything, and fought a giant robot, then fought a... A person that literally is the incarnation of an eternal freeze. Then we went to the Sienshu Lofu and battled out with a giant freaking ba uh, uh, I guess, um, lady. Which I re realized and found out that she was a Heliobus as well. Funny thing, ain't it? Blast? Expedition? What's that? Yeah, wherever we go, we eat, play, and have a blast. I don't think that's how you how that works, but you do you. So we should leave March behind to take care of the express. Now don't be like that. We're all about having fun, Dong. Uh, hey, that's not what I meant. I'm all for some fun. I just hope there won't be any surprise party crashers like Friday or Saturday. Who's Friday? Who's Saturday? <laughs> Okay, just because there's a curse, a man, a person named Sunday, there's no way in hell there's someone else gonna be named Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. <laughs> Is there? The Sienjo Lawfu has recently overcome a crisis by holding the war dance there, demonstrating to everyone that they've returned to a state of peace and safety. But that's what everyone said before we went to Penacony. You'll be totally safe under the family's protection. Yeah, that's what I call false advertising right there, but that's a different reason. No need to worry. The war dance is not like the Charmony Festival with all its hidden secrets. It's just a festival to honor the Rainbow Arbiter and the Cloud Knights, who fought against the Abominations of Abundance and protected the Xianzhou ships. So does that mean that there are going to be representatives of each ships coming in, coming into a where this festival is hidden? Held? Aside from star skiff performances, it's mostly martial contests. Nothing too different from the Taikian Roboball contest we've seen before. Now, I've seen mention it from the Taikian stuff. Dangerous sport. And there was a bit of lore on the, the planar orbs and ropes. Like, each gear relic has a lore into it about each world. What do you think, Himiko? Since we've accepted Miss Black Swan's proposal, we should probably head to Amphorius for refueling. Hmm, there's certainly no rush. This trailblazing expedition is quite unique, and the Express needs to be fully stocked and prepared before moving on to the next stop. I'm sensing a pattern here. Like before the major, after the major story ends, there's always going to be a contin continuance, a continuance, or whatever, you, whatever it's called, a story between the major. With Madame Herta's help, I was planning to deliver some Leviathan fossils from Kaelin the Abyss to Ron May, member 81 of the Genius Society. It could earn us some favors before we set off. However, it may take a few weeks. Ah, so that means we're not going to the Lawfu. Oh, don't you dare put that sad face on, March. You're no worse than Paimon. Just kidding. Being an adult means maintaining relationships, whether we like it or not, March. Since we've been invited, 
it's only right for the Astral Express to attend the ceremony. So, here's the plan. Pom Pom will take everyone to the Sienjo Lafu. Mr. Yang and I will meet up with Ron Mei and fulfill our promise. Meanwhile, you, March, and Don Hung will represent the Express and this attend actually, the war dance. Yeah, this is actually the first time that all three... Actually, it has. It wasn't been the first time that all three of us attended together. What do you two think? Let's see. I want to play with the Levine of Fossils too, but let's split the groups. <laughs> I don't hear any objections. Now that everyone's on board with the plan, it's time to work to the Sienjo La Fu. To be honest, I'm more pressed on seeing those Levine of the Fossils. Like, how are you carrying that stuff? But then again, War Dance does sound pretty fun. All right, so let's go ahead and discuss everyone. Uh, yeah. Kalinga Abyss. What does she expect to find there? Current research on the Leviathan merely proves how little we know about such life forms. By the way, if you don't know about Leviathan stuff that she just mentioned, I do believe it has something to do with the Aeon um, or Boros. Basically, the mother of all Leviathans, I believe. And I do hope that we see those things, in all honesty. That's why geniuses are interested in that field. Science is all about uncovering the unknown. The conversation between the two adults brims with complex jargon. And I can't read that fast. So, have a safe trip, you two. Don't miss us too much. <laughs> if I stumble upon some cool leviathan fossils, I'll bring a few back as souvenirs for you. Cool. All right. And with this, let's begin our adventure. Himeko really knows how to convince people. <laughs> Between Leviathan fossils and the war dance, the latter definitely sounds more fun. Uh, by the way, Don Hung, this time you'll be taking a stroll with us on the Lafu, right? <laughs> and just let you two wander around aimlessly on the Lofu by yourselves? <laughs> I don't think so. Plus, Mr. Yang is right. The Ambrosial Arbor Crisis just ended, and both the long-life and short-life species are still feeling uneasy. And that's why Jing Yuan wants to organize the war dance, to show that the Xianzhou Lo Fu is stable and safe. I don't remember the last time I did a uh, the contents of Hongai Star Rail. Now I know that I did not record... I did record the beginning, but I did not record... Um, the first major story, and I think I did half of the Xi'an show. Basically, this man was a videographer. I hope I say it right. A videographer. Basically, he was a half dragon uh, a species that has the ability to reincarnate because they were born from an aeon called the Aeon of. Um, I don't. Remember if it's presidents? I don't remember at all. Basically, dragons, and they're the long-eared got long-eared people, and when they reach the end of their life, they enter these into this egg state, and they return from beginning of the well, the seas to being reborn. Weird, right? And you start anew. You discard your old identity and make a new one. Even though you have barely have memories of the previous, which is funny, his was a tragic one because he tried to do something with the reincarnation process and either succeeded nor failed, but it was a serious crime. And uh, since he has extended an invitation, it's only right that I visit my old friend. And he's talking about uh, Jin Yuen because there wasn't lore. Uh, revolving around four characters: Don Hong, General Jin Yuan, and one of my one of the two one of the one of the characters that I have in my party. Uh, I forgot Jin Yu, and Blade. Yes. Uh, coming back to this place brings back so many memories. You know. Yeah, it certainly does. To be honest. So, here's something for all of you: a poem. By March seventh. <laughs> uh, hey, I'm not 
actually gonna recite a poem. <laughs> I was just thinking about all the twists and turns we went through when we first arrived on the Sienjo. This time, we're not being forced or enticed or chasing after wanted criminals. And we didn't have to sneak in through the cargo dock. This trip has been incredibly smooth. Yeah, total difference. Quite unusual, I must say. Yeah, it's uneasy for me, though. So, definitely unusual. Well, we're so easily pleased. I actually feel sorry for us. Oh, come on, don't jinx us, March. At some point, she might have to jinx us. <laughs> I'm just hoping for the best. You're the one jinxing us. Hey, don't reverse that on me. I got a message from... Oh, God, not this fool. Hi, guys. Fervor2 here, and I, got, I just want to pause the video for a moment to let you guys know what's going to happen in this video. The unfortunate thing is I have done terrible. Now, I wanted to try my game, this recording, with OBS. Now, OBS is a tricky thing to use. Like I said, like I probably would have mentioned, and I could have done this way before that, but I never knew how it works, so I just went and had to press record. See if it worked. Like, my last video on, uh, Hope is gone. See if it doesn't freeze. And I always double check if it's going well. You know? Then, after about an hour 40, um, I noticed things that were not doing too well. Like, for instance, um, the dialogue when you meet with Jin Ching in a few moments, um, it'll just freeze. And then it'll freeze over the cutscene, which is the introduction to the Boars and the new enemy faction basically werewolves and after a few moments you'll get into uh, uh, a mission when you go explore the al the alchemy um, section of the Xian show and Yin Yunling and Yan Qing gets in an argument um, there will be a gameplay there of using um, I think um, Yunli Yan Qing or uh, March I'm not sure but um, there it will lead to a fight between the two, and there will be a cutscene for it, and it introduces um, Fei Xiao, a new character as well. And I would have gone to a good story as well, but unfortunately, game froze, but dialogue was there. So I want to apologize for that one in advance. So I hope you guys enjoy whatever I salvage in the first few 50 minutes of the video, and you'll enjoy the next section. So I will see you guys later. I hate this character because he always ruins my freaking some uh, draws. So, <clears throat> I saw the Sky Fairy Commission's notice that the Express has docked on the CN show. Are you? Yeah. Quick with the news, eh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The general sent me to welcome you all. Okay. So, Yanking. Yang Ching, I think that's the name. Is the star? Haven always this crowded? Oh, there are so many people here. I can barely hear anything. I can barely stand the fact that my game is lagging. Yan Ching said General <clears throat> Jin Yuan sent him to welcome us. But where is he? Yeah, I think he's got guards at the station and well, let's wait for him in front of the loom. It's the most prominent landmark on the dock. Oh look, there's another Teletron over here. And a Pepeshi. It's my first time seeing those things here. Hey, you guys! Hold on a moment! Oh, don't... don't do that. Uh, did they just call us? Uh, look at their outfits. They're from Penacony, right? I'm pretty sure they are, March. Are you familiar with the Sienjo Lafu? Pretty much. <laughs> we know a little bit about it. What do you need? We are from Penacony. Maybe you've heard of it. We came to this ship to gather interesting materials for making dream bubbles. Oh, God. Oh, we just left there. Oh, talk about coincidence. Extreme coincidence. That's great. Do you know any must-see attractions on the Lofu? Uh, you've come to the right people. Why don't you ask the locals? <laughs> exactly! We're Sienjo experts. I'm pretty sure the person to our left is the ex uh, expert here. 
Uh, most of the tourists around at the moment are here to attend the war dance. And that's why we're here, too. Yeah, we know about that ceremony. But isn't the fighting ring still closed? How come? I've heard the ring was actually converted from a huge decommissioned Lavu fighter jet. Wait, you serious? So, it's even larger than a regular star skip? So, it's even bigger than the Radiant Feldspar? The Radiant Feldspar is bigger, I guess. But for now, all we can do is wait until the war dance starts in a few weeks, before we can board it. We've still got work to do, so we can't Sorry. just sit around waiting for it to start. That's why we're asking you about some must-see attractions. I'm liking this Starskip ship's design. It's pretty dang cool. It almost reminds me of the Star Fox uh, battleships most of the time. And I do love them. We're looking for unique experiences that you won't find on Penacony. Our clients love these kinds of dream bubbles the most. Uh, you're the expert here. <laughs> Give them some suggestions. Why ask me? We have an expert, expert to my right left. Jeez. All right. Uh, why not climb to the top of the ambrosial arbor? Um, no, I wouldn't think that. I don't like that answer. There's why not visit Arum Alley? That's where most of the foods are at. Then there's Fixtrol's Garden, which is not a very good place to visit, I think. Then Scale Gorge Waterscape. Hmm. I would think the. If we're trying to get new experiences, I'd rather pick either Fixtral Garden for a scary story ghost, or why not visit Scale Gorge Waterscape? I mean, it looks cool, though. That's indeed a good idea. While the dreamscape on Penacony is all artificial, Scale Gorge Waterscape is a celebration of nature's resurgence. It has some remarkable scenery. Awesome! I love being out there in nature. Let's go to Scale Gorge Waterscape first. If you're not going to get attacked by those R <laughs> abundance abominations. I'm a bit worried that nature-themed dream bubbles might be outdated. But hey, let's go check it out anyway. Well, you're going to probably check the other ones as well. See you later. Maybe we'll run into each other there in a few days. I'm uh, pretty sure we will. Uh, look. Yan Ching's here. Yeah, I almost said it wrong, though. Wow, really? Let's go catch up with him. Okay. Great, you're back again, aren't you, Scott? Yes, Scott. That oh my God. Toxic voice sounds familiar. Yeah. Haven't I heard it before in Arum Alley? Yeah. I recognize that you fool. You know what? This isn't my first time dealing with the Skyfaring Commission. I can handle your unreasonable ways. You're an ass. Also, funny thing, you can actually, in this event here, you can actually make him bark. Don't know why, because he did make a, made a bet. Uh, depending on the evidence gathering and all that stuff, he gathered enough evidence to implicate him with uh, messing with the uh, cargo, sabotaging, and, you know, Making sure that he gets what he gets, but he got what he deserved. I made a bark and I pressed him on it. I was laughing my ass off on that, on that, on that. Right. But straight up snatching IPC cargo? Isn't that going a bit too far? <sighs> Just as I've said it many times already. Once we've inspected the cargo and completed the security check, you can be on your way. Is there something wrong with your ears? Or is it just your brain? It's both. He's just an ass. I'm hearing you loud and clear. I'm thinking clear. And my answer is crystal clear. Not a chance. My hearing is about to go bleeding if you don't shut up. My god, this do is louder than Paimon. Keep detaining my cargo and I'll file a complaint directly with your general. Oh, wait. What's all this arguing about? Scott, what are you doing here? Oh, <laughs> you know what I'm going to go for. Did I just hear a dog barking? You jerk. <laughs> Who are you calling a dog? <laughs> Why are you here? That's my question. Why the hell are you here? <laughs> Staying on the Sienjo, are you? 
What terrible luck. Wherever you go, disasters aren't far behind. I mean, he's not particularly wrong, and you're particularly right. Aren't you the guest from the Astral Express? What brings you and Yan Ching to the Artisanship Commission? You, of course, but other importance. I heard. I heard you're in trouble. They're in trouble? No, it's me! I'm the one in trouble! No, you're the trouble. <laughs> Looks like you've met this IPC worker before. Yes, we did. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's a good or a bad thing. It's the latter, but it's unfortunate. I was sent here to deal with the IPC protest, Nishikwe. What's going on here? Alright. <sighs> As you know, this IPC transport ship was attacked by the Borison and rescued by the Juming's diplomatic ship. Then the Cloud Knights were instructed to bring it back to the dock for repairs and inspections. Oop, I dropped the phone. I guess got back. And this is Mr. Scott, the person in charge of this transport ship. So you're Scott. I've heard her mention you. Weren't you kicked off the Lafu before? Why did you come back? Exactly. Why are you here? <laughs> like I wanted to come back. I thought I'd just dock at the harbor for repairs and leave this forsaken place for good. Little did I know, as soon as the ship entered the harbor, a bunch of Cloud Knights showed up and snatched all our cargo from the hold. How so? What do you mean by snatched? I've told you a million times. It's a security check. Then why did you bring the cargo to the Artisanship Commission? You even brought in some shady craftsmen. It's obvious you're trying to steal the IPC's patented technology! Wow, what a great accusation. You are an uh, idiot. Listen here. Firstly, the Skyfaring Commission detected dangerous items that could possibly be weapons in your cargo hold. That's why they called me here, to double check. Secondly, where the heck did you get the idea that I'm a shady craftsman? He's annoying, I know that for sure. Even if there are dangerous items, what do they have to do with you? It's not even being shipped to the law, fool. We'll just fix the ship and be on our way. We won't unload our cargo here. But you'll have to stay in the port for several days before your ship is repaired and you can take off again. How can we just leave unchecked items sitting here? I understand, but we don't need to disassemble the cargo if it's just a security check, right? In most cases, we don't. However, our scans discovered that the cargo doesn't only contain machinery, but also some substance that resembles biological tissue. Oh, so experimentations? Biological tissue? Does this crate contain living things? Possibly. Maybe so. I'm afraid we'll need to wait for the Alchemy Commission for further confirmation. In any case, According to our regulations, we need to unseal one of the crates for further examination. But this IPC specialist has been hindering us on the grounds of patent secrecy. The Alliance's regulations on biological products are very strict. Without further inspection, there is no way for the Skyfaring Commission to release the cargo. Oh, really? Fine! If anyone lays a finger on that shipment, they'll have me to deal with! It doesn't matter if it's mechanical or biological. It's none of your business. I'm filing a complaint against the Skyfaring Commission's ridiculous regulation. Can I just punch you and just end this? I don't care if I get the lawsuit. Let me punch him. <sighs> this Mr. Scott seems stubborn and difficult to persuade. Honestly, I really don't want to have a vicious confrontation with the IPC. Me neither, but at this point, I am tempted. Well, I know a thing about, uh, or two, about convincing Scott. Leave it to me, I am an expert negotiator. I heard how you helped Aramali. 
The IPC representative back then was Mr. Scott, right? Since you've dealt with him before, it looks like I'll have to rely on you again. Yeah. What are you guys whispering about over there? Shut up. Just hurry up and give us back our cargo. Shut up, fool. I don't want to listen to you. Alright. Let's see. For the brows of grace. Alright. So, we're back in negotiations. Alright. At the end of the negotiation, if your morale is higher than or equal to your opponent's, it is considered a successful negotiation. My god, I really hate this one. It's kind of funny that there are going to be cho dialogue choices that will be uh, good or bad for you. During the negotiation process, if either party's morale drops to zero, it just ends. If you, your negotiation choices will lead to different outcomes, which can either increase or decrease your morale. As you make choices, the, go the negotiation progresses until the number of negotiation rounds drops to zero. At which point it ends. During the negotiation turn, you can use negotiation strategies to apply various negotiation techniques to help you succeed. However, you can view your opponent's information if you're unsure what to choose. This is freaking. As I recall, this guy won't listen to reason and can only be persuaded with intimidation. But. He does seem to follow rules to some extent. Let's use that against him. All right, let's check. Come on. <laughs> Why does this game hate me? Okay, my my game just froze for a bit. Hang on a second. Speaking of regulations, we have our own laws and regulations too. According to Article 4 of the Cienjo Alliance IPC Trade Consensus, the Alliance and IPC shall never infringe on each other's intellectual property rights. I don't like you. Alright, what's this? He is one of the representatives stationed at the Cienjo by the IPC. And let's see, he picks on the weak but fears the powerful. His experience in the IPC has taught him that he has to abide the rules. At least on the surface, so he'll be allowing to break it in secrecy. So... Negotiation strategy. Let's look at this. So, we can use negotiate emotional trigger or strategy from below. We can skip this round or double the results of this round's negotiation. Hmm. I don't want to, like, use it. So, let's see. Make proposals from the legal perspective. Start by making him feel uncomfortable. We can use Yang. King's uh, identity and to intimidate him or remind him of his embarrassing past. Well, I'm gonna pick it. Hey everyone, meet my old friend Scott. He's very talented, especially at imitating animals. <laughs> Stop it! Let's focus on the business at hand. <laughs> What's the point in dragging up the past? Because I want to, that's why. <laughs> oh, you're amazing! Can you teach me? Which animals can you imitate? J just forget it. No, I'm going to keep reminding you. <laughs> <clears throat> Even if we set aside the secrecy of intellectual property, these prototypes built by the Intelligentsia Guild are incredibly valuable, beyond your wildest imagination. If anything goes wrong, you won't be able to pay for it even with your lives. Hmm. All right, let's see what my choice is here. So we could just skip the reasoning part and resort to good violence. Assure him that you will proceed with caution, pay with pay you compensation you wish. And let's see. Hmm. Let's think. Let's think. Hmm. We got smoke and mirrors, feigned retreat. Um. All right. Why don't we just go back to the previous round of negotiations? Huh? Could you repeat that? I didn't quite hear you. Could you say it again? Yes! So, we can actually return to the negotiations previous answer, I do believe, but let's think. Hmm. Let's use Yang Ching's identity to intimidate him. 
Back in Arum Alley, you were dealing with civilian merchants where you could use the IPC's name to scare them. But this time, the Cloud Knight Lieutenant standing before you represents the will of Law Fu's general and won't be intimidated by your words. Mm -hmm. Of course, I'm sure we both want a peaceful resolution. And I want a resolution that involves punching him in the face. Yeah, that's true. Of course, I want things to be resolved peacefully, but aren't we getting stuck in rigid formalities here? <clears throat> Even if we set aside the secrecy of intellectual property, these prototypes built by the Intelligentsia Guild are incredibly valuable, beyond your wildest imagination. If anything goes wrong, you won't be able to pay for it even with your lives. Right, but I think we can resolve that by having the Skyfaring Commission to pay compensation, I do believe. Can you give us an exact amount, Mr. Scott? If there's any damage after the inspection, the Express... Um... I mean, the Skyfaring Commission will compensate you. Stell, come on, you gotta be tough. The Skyfaring Commission... Yeah, they will compensate you. Provided a detailed report of the damage is submitted. I don't doubt the financial strength of the Skyfaring Commission. However, this is not just about money! Oh, are you sure about that? Because the last time, it was about the money. Besides, the cargo on this transport vessel belongs to the Intelligentsia Guild. If you want to inspect the cargo, shouldn't you at least call in a member of the Intelligentsia Guild to be present? Oh, I'm pretty tight with, uh, I'm pretty tight with, uh, um, Dr. Ratio, but I don't think I want him, in, want him to involve him in some tedious and pointless argument. So, hmm. That doesn't mean I represent it. So let's see. It's time to escalate the issue. Try to resolve this recording according to the ZN show regulations. Or try to resolve according to the IPC. I am not going to do with this one. Hmm. Let's see. What's the escalation thinking? Hmm. Ah, Should I try either? I think these two are going to be fine. To be honest. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Let's go with their regulations, I do believe. Hmm. I think escalating escalate the issue might be worth it. You're pulling out all the stops, and you've even dragged members of the Intelligentsia Guild into this. Seems like you're not interested in resolving this at all. Exactly. He's trying to extend this. Since we've met each other before, Mr. Scott, let me share some information. Your transport ship was attacked by the Borison, and the Cloud Knights might see it as more than just a random attack. I'm sure what you have inside the cargo must have attracted these things, huh? <laughs> you think you can scare me with that? What exactly do you mean? Sure, you might purely be innocent victims of a Borison attack, but think about it another way. Why would the Borison launch such an attack near the Lafu? Perhaps some of your crew members colluded with them. We may need to interrogate every one of your crew to eliminate this potential risk. Exactly, we need them answers. <laughs> you know what? I don't think we really need a member from the Intelligentsia Guild present. I'm just hoping that... All the procedures will be thoroughly followed. Because you, you know? never, because you never had a member from the Intelligentsia Guild to begin with. You were just uh, spitting fire. We both need to follow the regulations because that's how the IPC and the CNJO operate, right? As an IPC worker, I have to abide by its regulations. If I make an exception and allow you to inspect the cargo, it'll spell disaster for me. All right, let's see. The Cien Show people are just following their own rules, that is true. I don't think bribing them is going to be good. Nor swallow my pride and beg them, because I do not beg for anyone. So, talk about his unpromising career prospects or Cien Show rules. Hmm. <laughs> Let me think. I think I like his unpromising career. He's, he's trying to keep his career on his line. On the uh, trying to keep his career together. 
I understand that you're trying to stick to the IPC regulations, and that's commendable, Mr. Scott. But what you fail to see is that this argument is tarnishing the IPC's reputation on the Sienjo. Oh, I like that answer because he, if he's a representative of the IPC at current, he is going to pretty much screw up the reputation of the IPC. And for which they will hear about it and they will fire his ass or demote him tremendously. If this conflict with the Skyfaring Commission escalates, it won't just make things difficult for your business, but it'll also have an impact on your career down the line. Of course, I, I never wanted conflict with the Sienjo. Like I said, all I wanted was to retrieve the cargo and be done with it, but they just refused to let us go. And we're the master negotiator. <laughs> well, you guys sure know how to argue your case. Especially when it involves you. Fine. I'll allow you to do the security inspection. It's just that, uh, I need some time to sort things out. This is a big deal. Let me talk to headquarters first. So, Mr. Scott, are you just stalling for time and planning to leave the CN Joe as soon as your ship is repaired? To avoid the Skyfaring Commission's inspection? Oh, that's definitely how he's gonna do it. That's what definitely he's about to do. Well, IPC staff are free to come and go. As long as they don't break any laws. Oh, who is that? Yeah, you've got some insight there. Who are you again? <gasps> oh, my. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Lingsha, Cauldron Master and Head of the Alchemy Commission on the Law Food. Dudes, look at her legs and hands. They look like scales to me. I think she's part dragon now, and yes, yeah, she is a Vidyara, and I do believe in the form. I'm not sure if it's forums or not, but she is one of the new characters that might be in the banner, but how long? I'm not sure. When is she going to be playable? Probably after... I forgot the other guy's name. I forgot. But I definitely would like her because I heard that she's a healer that she puts... Uh, Gallagher to shame. I'm definitely pulling for her. Could she be? She is yet another Arbiter General, I think, or the Cauldron Master. Yeah, she's the new Cauldron Master assigned here from the Sien Zhou Zhu Ming. Dude, she is absolutely gorgeous. Sorry. I received a report from the Artisanship Commission about cargo containing samples of unknown organisms. It said they needed help from the Alchemy Commission. I had nothing better to do, so I came myself. Do who? It's fine, Mr. Scott. If you really don't want your cargo to be inspected, it doesn't matter. How so? It, it doesn't matter? How can you say that? Yeah, rule. Oh, I forget it. Why are you being so nice all of a sudden? Hmm? Well, since you're not going to check it, I'll take this crate and be on my way. Is that okay with everyone? I bet she planned a tracker on this. And let's see how it goes. Yeah, sure. Why should I object? Not only this sample, but all the goods on the transport ship are yours to keep. Like I said, we won't inspect them. Wait a minute! Yang Ching, behave. That's right. Well, that's more like it. If only the young displayed a more reasonable attitude, we could have sidestepped that altercation just now. Oh, he's rubbing his ego right now. Our ship will leave in a few days once the engines are repaired. Your ship can leave whenever you want. But I'm afraid I can't say the same for your cargo. Oh? According to the import and export regulations signed between the Sienjo and IPC, all biological shipments can only leave the port when they have confirmed to be of no threat, or when all biological activity expires. Is she... what I think she did? Since we can't determine if your shipment is safe for the environment, I guess we'll have to wait for its biological activity to expire. Let me check the previous cases. Oh. Normally, it'll only take around 47 star calendar years. 
Oh, ho, ho, okay. <laughs> She's using the longevity, the life longevity, to wait this out. He'll be old and dead by then, maybe. <laughs> Only 47 years? Wow. Why so surprised? You're still young and full of energy. I'm pretty sure you'll live a few more decades. Have some confidence in yourself. Dude, she's using the Jian Show's longevity to pressure him to... I don't know. What we're trying to do. Comply, I guess. Instead of just, oh, let's just take all the crate and just wait. And we'll just wait for the repairs. But we'll suffer 40 years of waiting because biological stuff is either a threat nor not a threat. Ha! Typical of a long life species. Your words are dripping with sarcasm. While you may not care about time, I do. I'll be demanding double compensation from the Skyfaring Commission for every minute wasted. Mm -hmm. Sure thing, Mr. Scott. You seem pretty confident that your career and life will last long enough to witness this victory unfold. You'd be dead by then. And he knows it too, because he cannot waste any more time. Whatever it is inside the crates. Step aside, guys. Let them do the inspection. Exactly. If he has to wait that long for this whole biological samples to be wasted or expire, then it'll be pointless for him to carry the cargo. Like, he'll 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 get his what he wants. Uh, cargo back, repairs. They leave, but they can't leave because biologicals was biological uh, um, shipments wasn't expected to be threat or not, and he couldn't leave. Uh, but, Mr. Scott, swallow your pride, soldier. Come on, we're already in enough trouble. Just let them do the security inspection, and if needed, I can always grovel before the intelligentsia guild later. I'm just using my head for what it's apparently good for, right? <laughs> Don't forget to bark. <laughs> Sorry for the trouble. Thanks, bro. At least you wised up for a while. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna be a jerk. Well, honestly, at least you're not as annoying as that woman. <laughs> okay. I'll take the compliment. Just get on with the inspection. Don't act all chummy with me now that you've got your way. Oh, I'm more chummy as it is. This lady is really something else. And it makes me want to save and wait and pull for her the more. Oh my god. Is this the IPC product? Uh, listen up. Any damages caused by inspections will Shut be up. filed with the IPC. Oh my. Oh, why does it look like a werewolf? Oh, damn. Oh, damn. What the hell is that? Sorry. Dang. This thing. When an ally is afflicted with terror grip, attacking the caster of terror grip can dispel terror grip. When Terror Grip ends, if the caster terror of Terror Grip is not attacked to dispel it, then the affected ally will fall into a terrified state and un unable to perform actions. Oh, gosh. It's like... Um... Fear. Or whatever deep buff it is. Dude, the design of that mech oh, is... Ah. How unexpected. That was a surprise. Definitely a surprise, but look at this. Howling Casket. Let me check it. Let me check out the stats quick. So, Blood Fervor and Bloodlust. Look at this. What is this? A combat machine developed by the Intelligentsia Guild on utilizing Borison biological tissues. These machines possess the ten ten tenacious of vitality of long life species and the slaughter algorithm involved over countless ages. I knew that looked like a werewolf, to be honest, but look at that. That literally is almost like a Borison. Yeah, no wonder these got the Borisons actually attacked their ship. They thought that they were kidnapping their brethren or something. 
Or that someone from the CN show made a deal to trade these boars. Okay. I'm not gonna spoil that one. I'm just overthinking these things here. Alright, let's see what we do. Executing attack! Like fireflies to a flame, I will fight for myself. Until everything burns to ashes! Alright. My friends, indulge yourself. I just want to see that in slow mo. In all honesty. Alright. I'm gonna fast forward this. For another? Fight to live! Mm. Oh, that's the moon range right there? Damn. But too late for that. <laughs> no words for the moon. I like that achievement. Oh! <laughs> Net markers activated. Time for good old counter attack. Set to the seeds of flame. Dude, Mike. Dude, Mike. My character is about to be killed. Let's begin. Attack. Until everything burns to ashes! Ah! Ready for another? Time to mix things up. All right. My friends? <laughs> Indulge yourself! <laughs> All right. Fight to live! Oh, Firefly. Ooh, what that damage right there. Hell yeah. All right, let's slow things down a bit. Okay, fast forward. <laughs> Netmarkers activate. Time for a good old counter attack. Set to the seeds of flame. Ooh, that's terror grip right there. Ow. Confidence. Woo! Damn. It's my turn. All right. Come on, Fire Fly, finish him! Yeah! Dude. Dude. Time marches on in it. Days turn to more. Dear Himeko, <gasps> Mr. Yang, and Pom Pom, we're all good here on the Sianjo La Fu, so no need to worry. By the way, how's your trip going? Okay, I gotta pause right here. Look at Marge! Her outfit, she is, looks absolutely adorable here. Although, I would say this, I didn't record as much because at that point during the recording, it, my video came became a bit corrupted, so I apologize if you guys missed out on any of the important stuff. But I was able to salvage some cutscenes and some parts of the dialogues before the video just starts um, a bit wobbly, wobbly or whatever. The most important fights were there, maybe. Shame about the other video though. Anyway, we're skipping it a lot. Basically, um, from that part, March caught the opportunity to train about swordsmanship and sword play, and apparently the generals have forced these two. By the way, look at Yun Lee. <laughs> look at her deadpan face while she's eating whatever that is. <laughs> okay. As for me, I've somehow become the apprentice to two Cloud Knight sword masters, and I've been honing my sword skills with their guidance. The funniest thing is that throughout the entire thing, these two were acting like a married couple arguing and competing against each other for a child's affection. Basically, they tr um, everyone who played this treated March as the child of these two, which is weird, oddly weird, but given the fact that they're both uh, Yun Li and Yang Ching are both live, long, li long lived species, meaning they're they live long lives like elves. <clears throat> so it kind of makes sense that they are older than her. Weird. One of them is Yang Ching, the boy we've all met before. The other is Yun Li, 
the granddaughter of General Hua Yen from the Xianzhou Juming. Both masters are super strict, giving me a real taste of how hard sword training can be. I bet it is. I tried to drag her into this, but she refused. Wait. Then I tried to rope Don Hung in, but Master Yen Ching wouldn't have it. Of course I refuse. I mean, I've already chosen another path. I've learned how to wield a lance. I wield a hat, for fuck's sake. How else would you want me to wield a sword? I wield a bat, for God's sakes! Still, I didn't let the difficulty get to me. In just a few weeks, my sword skills have improved a lot! Both my masters think I have unique talents in swordplay, and are literally fighting each other to teach me their skills. Like two parents fighting to compete, uh, to, to gain uh, a child's favor. Thanks to their guidance? I've actually made some progress. When I get back to the Express, I'll definitely show off my skills and impress you all. Um. Looking forward to your reply. Yours, Mark She treats 7. this as she's writing a letter that has been years of training, when it's just a few weeks. Or a month. Really about months. Also, I tried recording OBS, like I mentioned earlier, but OBS kind of screwed me over. So, um, I had to resort to this. Days and nights fly by in the delve as the war dance fast approaches. Under the, the strict supervision of her two masters, or parents, March 7th trains tirelessly, almost developing tennis elbow. On that day, after the sword training, Well done. Uh, let's call it a day. I will admit that uh, Yunli's VA is doing pretty well uh, with their character. Miss March's sword skills are really coming along. She'll hold her own just fine in the war dance. Look at her. Maybe I have a chance to defeat my masters, or just watch. I'll win a fight when the time comes. This is literally her POV. We're playing as March. This is her training arc. And... Just you wait and see. I'll show off my skills in the ring and win a match. I'll make both of you proud. Look at these two. Those are the faces of two parents being proud of their daughter's graduation. <laughs> March 7th has actually become a pretty decent swordmaster in such a short time. Now I understand why Grandpa always had a grin on his face while training me. And that is the beauty of parenthood, or having grandchildren, or having children at all. <laughs> Are you sure he wasn't laughing at you? Oh, shut up! Okay, just like a married couple, they're, they're arguing with each other. I don't know why we say that. I mean... I know that they're children in some sense, but they are old. They are old. They are lifelong species. Just to clarify, if you do not understand. <laughs> it's all thanks to your amazing guidance, Masters. That's cute. Miss March, you're really getting the hang of wielding dual swords. If you're keen on advancing, trying out different Sanjo blades can improve your touch. Oh, let me see. Which sword is the most powerful? Single sword? Great sword? Or maybe a flying sword? Look at her. She's like, uh, I hope you're not talking about him. Don't be cheering him up. There's no such thing as the most powerful sword. It's all about the skill of the sword master. Yenqing wields several flying swords, while I only wield one. But remember how I kicked his butt at the Alchemy Commission? <laughs> I surely do. And unfortunately for you guys, I cannot show you this because my video got corrupted. And I can't show you that. I, I don't know if I should ask someone to lend me a clip of their a video. Or clip of their video to show you that. Or, I don't know. Is it preferable to ask a, fee, a YouTuber to share a clip or let me link their... Uh, Send a link to a clip to show you that part? Because I have no idea. I don't want to be troubling anybody, to be honest. 
But basically, they were at each other's throats. First, you didn't kick my butt. I'm pretty sure she did. Second, you'll never kick my butt. I'm pretty sure she will. Third, how about we settle this right now and see who kicks whose butt? I mean, they were still, they were fighting against each other and they almost got, well, really about to go at it until, um, another, a, a third Jian Show general. Uh, showed up and stops them with her freaking fingers. Really, she just grabs both the weapons with her fingers. That's how I'm gonna describe describe this. And it will be the character that I will be saving to pull. Yeah. Yeah, I'm up for that. <laughs> and if I kick your butt, you'll drop out of the war dance. Oh my God. Deal. The kid marches face like I can't believe my parents are fighting again. Uh, yeah. <laughs> By the way, I tried, as you can see from this skip button, I did play this thing a bit more. But I wanted to record, so thankfully it just went back to the cutscenes and the dialogue before. Why are you two arguing again? I thought things had been improving between you lately. Marriage is a steady but unstable progress, March. You may not understand. Give them time. Just kidding. Look who shows up. There was talk that the leading disciples of the La Fu and Ju Ming generals were supposed to face off in the war dance. But for some reason, they suddenly teamed up to train an apprentice of their own. <laughs> Turns out, the rumors are true. Oh, look who showed up. It's Xiao Shu. Xiao... Xiao... Xiao Shu. I think that's his name? By the way, he's from the... Uh, another uh, ship, I believe. He's the cook and a healer. Tomorrow is the big day of the war dance. Shouldn't you two be focusing on honing your skills instead of teaching sword play here? I mean, they were skilled enough to remember all the skills. I mean, they got plans with March. I know that for sure. Um, you're... Oh, that's right. You're the pink-haired fox from the Yao Qing. Yeah, I couldn't remember the ship where this guy's from. The Yao Qing. This is Mr. Xiao... Xiao Xiu. Or... <laughs> pink-haired fox. You know I'm gonna choose this, right? <laughs> She's adorable. What are you laughing at? You've got pink hair, too. I mean, that's also true. I'm Jiao Chu, Jiao Chu, the healer working for the general of the Senjo Yao Qing. Jia Chao. I hope I say it right. And I, if I didn't, I apologize. Ah, got it. So, you're the participant attending the war dance on behalf of the Yao Qing. And you were trying to sneak a peek at our training? Maybe. But also, he is the second character in the banner that's about to come after her banner. Sorry for the misunderstanding. I don't know anything about martial arts. I'm just here on the general's orders to take care of some official business. I didn't mean to interrupt your training. I'll be on my way. If you know nothing about martial arts, why were you smirking earlier? It's probably checking out the competition. <sighs> well, my curiosity got the better of me, I suppose. When I heard Miss March's pondering about what to learn, couldn't help but wander over. Yeah, because she was been bragging or are uh, constantly talking about how she is amazed to see all the martial arts and the swords and that she wanted to learn all these. That got her curious and these two picked it up. From my professional experience, cleavers, slicers, chopping knives and carving knives are all just tools. Kind of like frying, sauteing, boiling and deep frying in cooking. They're just ways for people to show off their skills. How you use them really depends on the ingredients you're working with. It's like your sword teaching methods. If you align your ingredient, in other words, your apprentice's natural tendencies, with the right cooking method, by which I mean the teaching method that best suits her, she'll make double the progress in half the time. For example, golden eggplant tastes best when fried, cloud peppers when stir-fried, and yellow boulder beef when simmered. 
It's all about discovering the nature oh, of the boy. ingredients. Well, guys, that's... Uh, I mean, apprentice. Well, guys, my lunch is getting... My lunch just got here. And apparently, I have no choice. The delusion of choice just shows up. One, two, and three is just me saying, I'm getting hungry. And I'm hungry in real life, to be honest. So I'm going to let this whole thing play out. I won't, make, I won't be able to say anything until the choice comes at me. So, where's number four? There's got to be fourth choice. And that's, I'm getting hungry. All this talk about food is making me hungry. Are you a healer? Why are you talking about food? Well, it's just a metaphor. The medicinal school I follow on the Sanjo Yaoqing is called the Ranja School. that specializes in food therapy. So it's only natural Wait. that I know a thing or two about cooking. What is the thing called food therapy? Now, I remember, now when he speaks like this, talks about how food can heal. So, you're the general's cook? That's what I said. I'm a healer. <sighs> but... Anyway, a cook who isn't interested in health doesn't make for a good advisor. Fine. Call me a cook if you want. It kind of reminds me of this character of the anime I watched um, a couple of years ago. Uh, Black Clover. I think her name was Charmy. She's the Magic Knight's... Uh, the Black Knight's... Um, the Black Bull's um, cook. Apparently her magic is literally cloud making these cloud sheep that her specialty is cooking that actually and really revitalizes the body and the mana which is magic which is weird but convenient if you can eat good while you get your recharge then I'll be eating good seeing the way you're looking at me it's obvious you think I'm just some feeble academic who likes to blabber on about martial arts yeah, that's all you come up with but in reality I know a thing or two about killing. After all, the art of healing inherently encompasses both life and death. Ooh. So why suddenly getting all serious with kids? But it seems like he just got offended. Why is this guy suddenly getting all serious with kids? <laughs> yeah. Do you recognize this bottle of medicine in my Hold hand? On. Not sure what that is, but I don't know, honestly. No? Exactly, no. This is called Tumble Dust, an extract from an exotic flower named Yabra. Ugh, is it poison? Is it a drug? Well, it depends on how it's used. With just one drop, it's able to numb a patient's body during surgery, making them painless throughout the entire process. However, increase the dose or the potency, and it'll slow the metabolism making the blood thin and resulting in the loss of all senses. Even long life species cannot escape its So events. it's an anesthetic in low dosage. But in a higher dosage, um, slows metabolism, making blood thin and loss of all senses. Yikes. This thing can save lives or take them. It's more powerful than the swords in your hands. Damn. That may be so, but still, I prefer settling things with a sword than, you know. Huh. Looks like I did get you all wrong. You're not a feeble scholar, but a sinister and despicable Yeah, one. you're literally gonna use poison against your enemies. Okay, you're, you're scum. Hey, hey, why the insults all of a sudden? <laughs> I'm just sharing some medical knowledge here. Not persuading you to poison anyone. It anyway. kinda sounds like it. Seems like you get real excited when talking about poison. I can't tell if that's an honorable thing or sinister. I'm gonna say both. Picture this. Two individuals. The one standing is full of malice. The other lying down is honorable and righteous. How can the one who's lying down label the one standing as sinister? In the throes of combat, where life and death hinge on a singular moment, every idea fades into nothingness. The only thing that matters is staying alive. Surviving the battlefield reshapes all notions of worth. 
be it integrity or treachery. In my eyes, their significance is negligible. Perhaps you've underestimated Yunli and me, Mr. Zhao Cho. We may be young, but we've seen our fair share of war. <laughs> well, well. Then you should know that the war dance is nothing more than a contest. So why are you so focused on it? Yeah, like, the general, uh, Jian Yu, I think that's how you, you pronounce the name, wanted to uh, make the war dance. I think to calm down the people because of the events that happened in the Xi'an Zhou, which is the Arbor Harbor, which are uh, the Arbor, the big ass tree. Now, it's one of the many reasons why two generals from two different ships have come here to get answers or pin somebody, I don't know, the plane. When I was appointed as the ringmaster for the war dance, I asked the general, we Cloud Knights are supposed to charge into the fray and slay enemies. Why do we have to swing swords in a ring just to please an audience? And this is how the general replied. To unsheath your sword in a ring is no different than on the battlefield, as your sword reveals the might of all Cloud Knights. The war dance is the perfect chance to showcase martial virtue and forge alliances from all over the cosmos. When we unsheath the sword without drawing blood, we not only display our might, but also the martial virtue of the Cloud Knights. I mean, nothing can bring people together like a competition, a tournament, or anything. That's quite an insightful statement, Yan Ching. Well, my apologies for being so short-sighted. I've been on the Law Fu for quite some time, but I haven't had the chance to see the ceremony venue for myself yet. You should... Hearing you speak so highly of it has piqued my curiosity. Would you mind showing me around? You want to see the Sky Splitter ship where the war dance will be held? Let's go! I bet Yun Lee and Miss March haven't seen it either, right? Me either. Well then, <laughs> I'll give you all a tour. Let's go. It's been a while since I've been here. Uh huh. What the hell? Looks like a lot of other visitors have also come to catch a glimpse of the Sky Splitter. Really? So who are these three? You know something, don't you? Uh, what's up, Mr. Zhao Cho? No, it's not. It's nothing my ass. I... I have developed a keen sense of skepticism right here. Do you see that airship in the distance? That's the Sky Damn. Splitter. The venue for the war dance. So we're going to have a tournament arena inside that ship, huh? That's cool. It doesn't look all that impressive from this distance. Mm -hmm. The Sky Splitter is actually a decommissioned Lawfu military vessel. People aren't allowed on board until the war dance officially commences. All right. Again, that's a good place for a screenshot, but I'm just gonna pause that real quick. All right, we're good. Tomorrow, when the bell rings and the ceremonial cannons roar, I'll be there representing the Cloud Knights of the Sienjo Lawfu. Standing in the ring, ready to take on challengers from all over the cosmos. That's quite the burden they put on you. Since I was a kid, I've been training in swordplay and the art of war under the general. Every day, I'd swing my sword 10,000 times and then thrust it 10,000 times, repeating the process over and over. I understand that I'm not like other kids. I never envied the toys and freedom they all had. I never found sword practice boring or hard, even in the thick of battle. Facing down savage abominations, I never felt scared. Each day, I could feel myself getting stronger and stronger, and I racked up countless victories. It's the best feeling in the world. Then, I faced a really tough opponent, and just one slash shattered my confidence into a thousand pieces. That's when I felt true fear for the first time. Maybe 
That's what Mr. Zhao Cho meant by life and death hinge on a singular moment. Every idea fades into nothingness. After that, I had to pick up the pieces and try to put myself back together. But no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't seem to find my old happy self again. I often ask myself, why do I wield my sword? If defeat is inevitable, why do I continue to fight? Is it to reclaim the joy of victory? To meet the general's expectations? Or to secure my honor among the Cloud Knights? While the general could teach me the art of swordplay, he couldn't teach me why I should keep on going. He said, the reason must come from within myself. I've been struggling to find that reason, but after talking with you, Mr. Zhao Cho, I think I already have that reason in mind. Good for you. As a member of the Cloud Knights and the General's Apprentice, I've had a weight on my shoulders, and I know there's still more to shoulder, but when I wield my sword, it feels like I'm letting go of everything. I love the feeling of giving it my all, facing any obstacle in front of me, pressing forward. That's why I wield my sword. Cool. Oh, Yanqing. So young, yet so grown up. By the way, how old are you exactly? Exactly, that's been on my mind, to be honest. They never tell them the age. Age doesn't really matter. All sword masters will understand how I feel. Not yet. Okay. Hmm. I get it. Looks like all the kids on the Lawfu live tough lives. So, how about you, Mr. Yeah, give Lee? us a story. It's not polite to ask a girl her age. No matter which Sianjo ship you Otherwise, on. she'll pummel you with her big ass sword. I'm not asking your age. I'm asking if you have a dream like Yan Ching has. You don't talk like a cook. You sound more like a TV host or something. <clears throat> like, a t like a cooking show host? A <laughs> wow, really? <laughs> Need I repeat myself again? I'm a healer. But you got the mannerisms and tone of a host. Okay. Well, I... I don't have a dream like Yan Ching does. The only reason I'm participating in the Ringmaster's Challenge is because I made a promise to my grandfather that I'd win the precious sword he's contributed to the war dance. Since when? Sounds like that mind of yours is just filled with swords. Simple. <laughs> I bet you've got nothing better on your mind. My father was a craftsman on the Sienjo Juming. Because of his foolishness, many innocent people fell victim to the cursed swords he forged. Wait, there are cursed swords? Now I remember watching a uh, mysterious Celestia trailer of her character. She is on a furnace, melting down swords that speak to her. Apparently those are cursed swords. Okay, so her father did something stupid and created these cursed swords, and a lot of people got hurt. Since I was a kid, it's been clear to me that not everyone deserves to have a weapon in their hands. Giving them a sword is no different than being cruel to the innocent. So, whenever I come across someone unworthy of a sword, I can't help but want to take it away from them. <laughs> Given that Yen Qing is the war dance ringmaster, I'm stepping up to challenge him. Oh. To ensure the precious sword doesn't fall into the hands of an unworthy master. Oh, is that how? Is that why she snatched that sword away from him when uh, he missed his attack? Uh, okay, so she was sizing him up. Hey, what do you mean by an unworthy master? <sighs> I see. It's not easy for kids on the Juming either. Well, it's better to have a reason for wielding a sword than to be lost and confused. I've saved countless Cloud Knights in my life, and there are plenty of exceptional warriors 
Just like the two of you. What happened, Mr. Zhao Cho? Oh, oh, nothing. I was just reminded of some old friends and old tales. Judging from my professional perspective as a healer, both of you possess remarkable vitality. Your energies flow like raging fires and mighty gales. The upcoming fight will definitely be impressive. Well, we've seen the Sky Splitter and toured the Stargazer Navalia. I guess it's time to say goodbye for now. What? You're leaving already? But you haven't asked me about my dreams. God damn it, March. I've been working hard too, you know. Yeah, March. It's getting late, Miss March. Unlike you lot, I'm a grown-up bound by responsibilities and duties. The tasks entrusted to me by the general won't complete themselves. By the way, Yen Ching, is it normal to have so many people wandering around in an automated area like the Stargazer Navalia? Is that suspicious enough? Actually, this is a restricted area. But since you're all guests, I made an exception, so... You could take a look around. If that's the case, what were those three guys that we saw earlier doing there? I understand. Well, I'll take my leave. I wish you both the best of luck in the ring tomorrow. And Jiaochu waves and then leaves. Uh, seriously? I just spent so much time thinking about my dream. But he didn't even ask me. Ben, I think your dream may be too... I don't know. I can't think of anything. <laughs> now that we're done with our tour of the Sky Splitter, shall we continue with our training? Why don't we take a day off? Wait, take a day off from Yangqing? That's a first. What? You want to secretly practice swordplay by yourself? <laughs> dream on. <laughs> You know, cramming before a fight never works out. That is true. For some reason, seeing the Sky Splitter has boosted my confidence. So, I've decided to conserve my strength for tomorrow. All right, I'll take you out of the Stargazer Navalia. Oh, just shut up, Red Fang. This is not a beast ship. I need some time to take care of things. Wait a minute. Red Fang? Beast ship? Where are these guys? You willingly donned the skin of a lowly beast to join this mission, dedicating yourself to our glorious cause. And now you're telling me you can't handle it? Do you realize how many ships we need? What lowly beast? I'm doing my best, all right? It takes time to figure all this out. When the guns go off tomorrow, all eyes will be on it. That'll be our only chance. Chance to what? How's that? Who's there? What language is this? These guys are sus to me now. Who are you guys? An impromptu inspection. Why are there outsiders loitering in Stargazer Navalia? And a bunch of kids at that. <laughs> hey, kids. Didn't your parents ever tell you to stay away from the Stargazer Navalia? I know it's an automated facility, but it doesn't mean you can just break in and do what you want. <laughs> I'm, I'm honestly going to laugh at the fact that the Cloud Knight did not recognize this uh, Yang Ching. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah. And he's known. That's suspicious to me, but... Let's play along for now. I'll take the little ones away right now. Uh, sorry. I'll take the little ones away right now. <laughs> uh, big sis! Let's go! <laughs> I, I want to play in Ever Hunt Plains! <laughs> <clears throat> I was drinking my soda. <clears throat> that caught me by surprise. <clears throat> I never wanted to hear this guy say the words Big Sis ever again. Or if my male character was here, big bro. Never again. She <laughs> look at her face. That's me. Ever hunt planes? Uh, uh yeah, sure. Big sis will take you there. 
Let's go, big sis, march. Shwa! <laughs> you should have let me. Shh, the overhaul is done, and everything looks good. We should leave. And, yeah, we're not gonna ignore that. Suspicious enough. Could you repeat what you just said, Yenching? She was not paying attention. Come on, Yun Li. What did I say? Big sis, let's go. I want to play in everyone planes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That's gonna haunt me. <clears throat> uh, come on. Can't you read the room? Something's <clears throat> definitely off about the three people we just met. No kidding. Yeah, anyone could see that. <laughs> I just wanted to hear you say it again. God, Yun Li the gremlin. I love her. That pink-haired fox tried to say something. I'm pretty sure he sent something fishy. Since he's not familiar with this place, he just dropped us a hint. But you didn't seem to be paying attention at all. I knew that from the beginning. Stop competing. All right, the Clack Cloud and I didn't didn't recognize Master Yang Ching. Looks like they were tampering with the Star Skip production line, huh? But that's more suspicious to me. That Cloud Knight didn't recognize Master Yen Ching at all. That's really weird. That's one of the many suspicions. What? <laughs> Is he famous on the Lavu or something? Not even the Cloud Knights on the Jumi, who all know my glorious name, might recognize my face. God, the gremlin in her. You have a point. A Cloud Knight, a member from the Skyfaring Commission, and a craftsman. They're from various departments. And the reason for the overhaul seems legit. But one of them blurted out some weird language just now. Did you hear that? Yeah, like, Zha or Zha. They t they're talking like they're from Klingon. I have a feeling that if we secretly tail them, we'll definitely catch these guys in the act. Oh no, this is going to turn into a stealth mission, isn't it? Follow my lead, and be careful not to blow our cover. It's a stealth mission, isn't it? Well... Looks like it's time to go Metal Gear March. Never mind who they are. Let's don't get too close, Miss March. They might spot you. Oh god, I skipped the dialogue. All right. All right, we could film them. We could film them. So, multi-conditional photo shoot. Okay, so during the mission, the more conditions need to be met to complete the photo shoot. So, the required objectives are listed on the top left corner. And if when all the Photoshop requirements are met, we could press enter and take a picture. Alright, let's see. We need to get as close as we can here. And oops. there we go. Too bad we can't save it, but whatever. We should have just killed those lowly beasts. Wait, did he just call us lowly beasts? Those little brats won't take up much space. There are boxes all over this place. Just dump them into one and no one will notice. Okay, now they're talking about dumping bodies. Alright, they are definitely suspicious. Cut the theatrics, Grulok. Even the slightest slip-up could interfere with Lord Moktok's plans. Okay, why do these guys are speaking Klingon? Like Grulok or Moktok. Sorry, I did not mean to insult the Klingon. I love the Klingon people. Honestly, they're my favorite type of species in Star Trek. So where are we heading next? To check the freight skiffs. We've got a lot of preparations to do. Also, don't forget to take those crates with you. Weapons, supplies. We've got to be well prepared. Otherwise, we're screwed. They already are, they already are screwed by us tailing them. Also, weapons and supplies. What are they being preparing for? So... Are they... smugglers? What exactly are they up to? Not sure about smugglers, but... We'll think of something. I have no clue. But they seem to be moving those crates. I've got an idea. We can hide inside the crates and follow them. Excellent plan, Yang Chang, but which one? Alright. Let's find a suitable box to hide in, which... is already chosen. Can it really fit us in there? Taking advantage of the temporary absence of the group, you cautiously approach a crate and crawl inside. Ugh, so cramped. 
in here. I can hardly breathe. Just hang in there. Hang in what? You hear footsteps pacing back and forth beside the crate. If someone were to open the crate at that moment, they would certainly catch you in your ridiculous hiding position. Fortunately, that doesn't happen. The floating mechanism at the bottom of the crate is activating. You feel it begin you feel it begins to drift slowly forward. After what feels like an, an entire amber era of holding breath in silence, you heard the sound of the crate touching down. Let's just put the cargo here for now, all right? Then we'll move on to inspect the ships. Lord Moktok said that as soon as we're done, we're to board the freight skiff and leave this place. Don't worry, I've changed the shipping schedule. You two, come with me. Is it just me? I keep smelling that stench of lowly beasts everywhere we go. Don't be so paranoid. Departing, the departing footsteps like a, look, sounded like a signal, prompting you to breathe with a sigh of relief. Looks like they're planning to escape on the skiffs in Stargazer Navalia. They keep talking about their plans, but where did they come from? And what do they want to do on the Sienjo? Well, they're definitely up to something bad. Wait, uh, they disappeared! Let's catch up to them! Okay! Metal Gun March on the Prowl! Tread softly. Breathe quietly. Okay, we're hiding behind Make cover. Make sure to keep an eye on them. Hide out of sight as soon as there's any sign of activity. Okay. So we're doing Metal Watch Gear. Watch out! On okay, definitely Metal Gears. Metal Gear freaking <laughs> March. All right, all right. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna get this in first try. I'm the master of stealth. Did he spot us? Quickly, hide! Well, I take it back! Oh, no, no. <clears throat> I knew something was off. There's always this stench of lowly beasts in the air. Damn it. Well, looks like we're gonna fight. Looks like those brats were following us the whole time. Why are they coming back? Quickly, retreat! Damn it, no, I was gonna fight him. You were discovered by the target. Maybe give it another try. How far Looks back? Like they're planning to they keep talking about the uh, they're definitely yeah, that far up back. to something back. Alright, definitely this far back. Okay, so it's telling me now. When trailer mode is active, the gameplay prompter will appear on the top. Okay, I know about this thing. I did this stealth before. Yeah, I already did the stealth before. Bad. Wait, uh, they disappeared. Let's catch up to them. Alright. So I really gotta time my my uh, things. Watch out! Oh, 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 fuck, 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 fuck. <laughs> okay. If that didn't see him, send him on alert. I don't know what will. Alright. I can't get too far. And I can't get too close. I gotta keep an eye on this tab activities here. I'm trying to read the dialogues in this one as well. Alright. Did he spot us? Quickly, hide! He did not spot us. I was too loud. Okay. I mean... Right. Alright. He's far enough. Definitely far enough. There we go. Checkpoint. Don't be so paranoid. We're running out of time. Get over here, Shuhart. I'm coming. Shuhar. Sorry. All right. What now? Oh hell no. He's running. Oh uh, he's. We should catch up to them quickly. Did he spot us? Quickly hide. God damn it, Ching. He did not spot us. He just hears us. But I think he smelled the boba. Yes. Funny enough, March has boba in honor at all times. So yeah, they could probably smell the boba Watch tea. Out. They're on high alert. I don't need a I don't I don't need a hide. I can just stand still right behind them. They're too stupid. Yeah, we reached it. Don't get too close, Miss March. He might spot you. What? What the hell? What are oh. they up to? They're all wearing official uniforms, but I'm pretty sure they're not members of the Skyfaring Commission. 
the Artisanship Commission, or the Cloud Knights. <sighs> this is way too suspicious. You took the words right out of my mouth, Yin Cheng. Uh, never mind who they are. Let's just film them. That way, if they do anything bad, we'll have solid evidence against them. That's great. Thank you, March. All right. We gotta get photos, so let's see. We need to do this on a three times zoom here. Alright. There we go. Wait, what's with the heartbeat? I noticed there was a heartbeat there. Yeah, heartbeat. Yeah. Look at this. A freight star skiff with enough room to fit at least 20 of my men. I'll let the others know and have them prepare more star skiffs. Once we're past the checkpoint, there will be beast ships waiting for us. Okay, what are beast ships, to be honest? Lord Moktok is ready. The revival of our ancient bloodline all hinges on this operation. From the way they're talking, they're, they talk like they gotta constantly growl every time they talk. Like they're beasts as well. What bloodline? What did he just say? Beast ships? March, what are you doing? <laughs> Who's there? What? Who? March, you forgot to turn on the silent shutter. They can hear you. Damn it. It's those brats. I told you to get rid of them, but you didn't listen, you idiot. Uh-oh. Looks like we're going to fight for real. Wipe them all what out. The? Wait, what the hell? <gasps> They're furries! I mean, they're werewolves! They're Borsians! <laughs> oh my god. Borsian? Okay. Yeah, Borsian. Adosa! Die, you lowly beasts! Yeah, they're definitely Borsian. And then I guess they're Borsian as well, but they chose to, like... Alright. Alright, to give you a little explanation, there was a tutorial that I failed to, like... Uh... I failed to mention. She has an ability to... Well, look at that. She's holding that Boba T right here. And if you choose to use it on someone who can attack, this thing accumulates. And that increases her... Uh, critical damage, I believe? Pardon my manners. Become Shifu is the thing. I'll catch up. Yeah. I wanted. To, I just wanted to see how it looks like in slow motion. That's all you got. Like fireflies to a flame, life begets death. All right. All right. The game is messing with me now, and that's unfortunate. Nice, like a good brew. Full body, my friends. Yeah, it's messing up. Indulge yourselves. Thank you. Right. I will keep fighting. Take your okay. positions. And the funniest thing about her buff here is the fact that um, um, when her buff activates or something like charge, when it comes to seven, it increases it uh, immediate takes action simultaneously, increases damage dealt. 80%, by the way. And I have yet to do anything to her. I got her uh, some um, relics on her already, but this is a story one here. Um, plus, whenever I use the buff on anyone who has the become Shifu, Shifu uh, buff, Let's we'll build up that stack. The mood is set just right. And of course, the game doesn't like. Let me hear. It's starting to mess up on me already. This is more than a sense to see some pain. There we go. Come on. Yeah. Step up, let's see ya. Stay in step. Alright. Dreams do come true. Alright, let's nice see you again. Alright. Alright, here comes her, her ultimate here. Tiger Wanna see your ultimate, guys? I can really do. Crouchy Tiger. Something. Low carbs. That's what she said. And the audio is messing up on, on me as well. Something is very wrong with the damn game as well, so I can't really fault anyone or myself. I 
Alright. That was already stacked, filled already, and I can't show you more. That sucks. That really sucks. Alright, we took all those. How is this possible? How did these Boxians change their appearances like that? That is the appeal of the furry community. I'm just kidding. I'm sorry, guys. If you guys are furries, I'm sorry. But that's funny. <laughs> they wanted to become werewolves, these Foxians. Wow. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. I got, I'm going to stop now. They're not Foxians at all. They revealed their true form. They're Borison. Just like the bandits I defeated on the IPC ship. So they... So what's, what's going on here, then? Wait. That means... That means that the Borison have infiltrated the CN show. Well, how did the Borison manage to infiltrate the CN show? Simple, cunning. It's not just a simple disguise of wearing our clothing and shaving their whiskers. They're somehow able to alter their appearance to be indistinguishable from Foxians. They even have official IDs for the Skyfaring Commission, the Artisanship Commission, and and even the Cloud Knights? Yeah, which just explains why that the Cloud Knight did not recognize Yang Ching. Let me check this fake Cloud Knight's tag. Maybe it'll give us some clues. Lu Jun, Lu Jun. officer of the Patrol Defense Squad? Ah, wait! What you thinking, man? What's the matter? Wait a minute. Didn't I remember that name? I encountered a patrol officer named Lu Jun before. It was a few <gasps> weeks ago when we were transporting the Borison prisoners. Ah, it was from the time when we first saw the the, uh, the Borison. Okay, hear me out, guys. When I pronounced the name Lu Jun, I know it may sound dumb for me, but it, it's almost similar to pronounce the word Lupin. I think Lu Jun Lupin. But that's eh, just my thinking here. Don't don't think don't put too much thought into that. If they can forge official identities and move around the Sienjo without raising suspicion. Oh no. This is bad. I think it's worse than bad. Uh, even worse. If you find one cockroach on the express, it usually means It means an infestation. There are they more are... Boris and hiding on the Sienjo. I bet their plan is much bigger than just stealing information. Right. Anyway, I think I'm, I didn't get to record much of the game as well. So I would tell you this. I think the uh, the general from the Yao Qing, um, who is a Foxy herself, is personally visiting uh, some very famous werewolf called Hu Lei. That's the actual name, Hu Lei. We've got to report this to the Seat of Divine Foresight. Yeah, let's go. Meanwhile, in the seat of the fine foresight. Hmm. Okay. Any time now. <clears throat> okay, we're going back to the Trailblazers POV. That's cool. Okay. Good. Good, good, good choice. Good choice. Good choice. Good choice. Fuck. Alright, so we're back as the Trailblazer. And we need to speak with you, I think. Yeah, her name was Fei Xiao. Yeah. I am glad to finally meet you in person, guests from the Astral Express. I'm Fei Xiao, the general of the Xian Zhou Yao Cheng. And probably the next character I am willing to save to pull. I'll be skipping the cook. I don't care. Let me introduce our guest to you. The one dressed in green... Is... He's the reincarnation of Inviter Lune, 
and the person behind him is the newest member of the crew. I've heard a lot about you. Hello, hello. Outside the reports from the Law Fu, the Skyfaring Commission of the Yao Xing has also gathered plenty of information about both of you. I've been eager to meet you face to face for reasons that I'm sure General Jing Yuan has explained, right? I don't know about that. But yeah, we're here to answer your questions as witnesses. General Jing Yuan didn't tell us about your attentions at all. You're here about the Ambrosial Arbor's resurrection, you know? I couldn't remember the name of the tree. I just call it the big ass tree, but Ambrosial Arbor. That's the name of the tree. But I think, yeah, we're here to answer questions as witnesses. Official, yeah. <laughs> That's right. But don't worry, this isn't a trial. I just want to have a chat with you and get a better understanding of the facts. Pretty much it is. According to General Jing Yuan's report, the Ruin Legion is to blame for the Ambrosial Arbor Crisis, and all Arbiter Generals should pay attention to the Ruin Author's movements. Yeah, Ruin Legion or Antiminer Legion, I like how they have a different type of name for everything. Over the years, the Destruction's minions have wreaked havoc on countless worlds, and the Alliance has been keeping an eye on them. But no one expected them to join hands with the remnants of the Abundance. The damage caused by the Ambrosial Arbor Crisis was far less severe than expected, which is good news for us. However, it was quite different from the Ruin Legion's usual style of destroying life wherever they go. While I trust the bravery of the Divine Foresight and the Nameless, I'm curious about some details missing from the report. I'd like to take this chance to have an exchange with both of you. Really? Let me be clear. The questions I'll ask might not reflect my actual thoughts, so please don't take offense if any of my questions seem a bit harsh. Hmm. Please, go ahead, General. But keep in mind, we can only answer based on what we know. And perhaps you already have the answers to your questions in your heart. <laughs> you have a clever tongue. I like it. I like her. Oh god, negotiations. Mind's claw is quite articulate. Right now, her intentions are unknown, and Jing Yuan wants us to be honest. Maybe I'll just stick to the facts we know. Okay, so we are thinking, 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 thinking. So the highlights, we may just stick to the facts that we know. Let's of. cut to the chase. Before the crisis struck, the Astral Express was guided here by a Stellaron hunter, a wanted felon, in an attempt to resolve the Stellaron crisis. However, everyone in the cosmos knows of the Stellaron hunter's reputation. So why did you place so much trust in them? Could it be that some of you have a connection with them? Let's see. It all comes down to the Stellaron. We are the good guys. Raise your suspicion about your relationship with the Stellaron Hunters, or talk about Elio's prophecy. Hmm. I'm gonna try the negotiation strategy here, so... Emotional Trigger can double the effects, the results, or Smoke and Mirrors, we just skip it. I'm gonna try this. For now. You silently fix your gaze on the Marlin's claw, a trace of a provocative smile plain at the corners of your mouth. Fei Xiao offers a slight smile, displaying no anger. Strange. Alright, so it's successfully activated. So, I think it comes down to the Stellaron because Lei Ho, um, Kafka told us about there's a Stellaron right here, and automatically we are respond responsible for that because apparently it messes with um, the travels of the Express, so... Apart from the Law Fu, there mm. are many other worlds suffering from Stellaron corrosion. For example, Urelo 6, the world that the Express stopped at before reaching the Law Fu, was one of them. Yeah, it really did double my results. That's stupid cool. I think I might purposely choose the wrong answer, just in case. To the Express, Stellarons act as roadblocks on the Silver Rail and pose risks to the warping process. And that's why dealing with Stellaron issues is part of the duty of the Nameless. Yeah, for true. Ah, 
I've heard about those problems caused by Stellarons. The Express connects various worlds, so it makes sense for you to take care of this. The Cosmos is a mess, and the Trailblazers are just doing their best to fix it. Hmm. I understand. Let's All move right. on to the next question. The report suggests that Don Shu, the master of the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus, colluded with the Lord Ravager and used the power of the Stellaron to resurrect the Ambrosial Arbor. Yeah. But here's the thing. Don Shu was just a chief alchemist. Even if she colluded with our enemies and summoned the Stellaron, how did she manage to bypass the Vidyatara guards around the Ambrosial Arbor? Hmm. Let's see. The preceptors of the Lao Fu seem suspicious. I personally met Don Shu. The exile of Imbibitor Lune is what led to this calamity or refused to answer anything. I got the feeling that if I say this, it might just, uh. Hmm. Probably bad. Honestly. It'll put my morale back a bit. Let's think. To be honest, I'm just gonna go. I'm just gonna be answer my honest. I actually personally met Don Shu. Let's go with that. I personally met Don Shu once. Her closest friend was killed during the war on the Fang Hu, and she harbored deep hatred towards the hunt. So she spent years making preparations in the Alchemy Commission in order to take revenge on the Xianzhou. Revenge is also a form of the hunt. Really? However, that doesn't explain how she managed to bring the Stellaron into the Scale Gorge waterscape, which was guarded by the Vidyatara. Well, you should ask Don Shu herself for the answer. If she's alive. Unfortunately, Don Shu is dead, and even her yep. corpse has crumbled into ash. Yeah. That's one less clue we can pursue. And that's unfortunate because she got turned into an antimatter legion by Ventilia herself. But, I won. Oh. It seems that your answers have addressed all my questions. I know there was like more ants, more questions, like three questions, that talks about Ventilia, I will believe, but... Yeah, I shouldn't have done that, but... Maybe I should have stepped back a bit. Who knows? Generals, I am finished with my questioning. So, what do you think, General Feishao? Have the doubts in the report been cleared up? <sighs> The two Nameless have been honest in their answers. <clears throat> Even though there are some tricky details, my intuition tells me there is nothing wrong. However, the three questions I posed earlier were not just for the Nameless, but for you too, General Jing Yuan. First, the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus grew uninterrupted on the Law Fu, yet the Six Charioteers were not aware of it. That was a dereliction of duty. Second, you believed in the Stellaron Hunter's prophecy, and entrusted outsiders to solve the crisis, even granting them access to the Plague Mark. That was a dereliction of responsibility. Third, you insist on holding the war dance right after the Ambrosial Arbor Crisis, putting the Lawfu back in the spotlight. That is a dereliction of wisdom. I can understand a dereliction of duty and... Responsibility, but what does this have to do with wisdom? Merlin's Claw. Is this your line of thinking? Or the Ten Lords? From the moment I walked in, I made it clear that the questions I'd ask might not reflect my actual thoughts. Ah. The disciples of Sanctus Medicus were deeply rooted and have been plotting for a long time. I admit it was my negligence for not noticing it earlier. As for the Stellaron Hunter's prophecy, I didn't believe all of it, but in the end, the Law Fu did survive the Ambrosial Arbor Crisis. So, I think it's safe to say that Elio's prophecy about the future holds some merit. And as for the war dance, do you think I'm unaware of the risks? However, risks can also be opportunities. The Law Fu has lain low for too long. I believe it's time to stir up the dregs hidden in the depths and wash them away once and for all. <laughs> Just as I expected from our sophisticated divine foresight, you have a way with words. I like it. <laughs>
But, unfortunately, ever since the report was submitted, the Alliance has been filled with rumors and speculation. Even within the Lawfu, there are people accusing you of neglecting your duties, resulting in the Ambrosial Arbor's resurrection. So what are your thoughts on all of this, General Fei Shao? As a fellow Arbiter General, I fully understand the difficulties of this position. Personally, I think all these rumors are meaningless drivel. Across the sea of stars, the Divine Foresight knows better than anyone else what happened on the Lawfu and the meaning behind it. Just as what happened on the Xianzhou Yao Qing recently. What happened in the Yao Qing? You mean the Xianzhou Yao Qing is also... And the scouts of the Verdant Knights have sent back reports that Borisin are making trouble again. The Borisin packs that were once divided and scattered have started swallowing each other up forming larger and larger packs. Moreover, there's an entity named Mongus behind it all. Mongus. We got we got a bunch of Mongus. <laughs> Just kidding. An entity? According to the report, this entity isn't actually a Borson. It's a woman claiming to be the messenger of the Master of Immortality. She's described as having 12 faces and 12 pairs of fangs as cruel as poison, and as elusive as quicksand. The Borison believe she'll give them a chance to rise again. Oh. <sighs> That's Fentilia. Of course it's Fentilia. She escaped, and now she's bringing the abundance together, I think. That's right. You're lucky that I'm the one who came this time. If it were the Patina Justice or the Seer Strategists, this conversation might not be so friendly. Well, guys, that would be it for today because unfortunately, you I won't be able to see the rest of the dialogue because unfortunately, at the end of that point, my video just kind of got uh, stopped. And uh, I lost a bit of a good dialogue with these three, but in the end, as you can see from the Inquisition to Rectocide, we are off to Shackling Prison. But that's just gonna be it so thank you all for watching this video and i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did enjoy this video please give this video a like or a dislike and again apologies for not providing you with the full game play game story but still i hope you guys would understand and of course if you did enjoy some of the story let me know in the comment section down below which one might have been your favorite and if you guys want to understand I could probably provide you a link, but I don't know who would be so kind enough. Let me do a shout out. <clears throat> As always, thank you all for watching. I hope to see you guys in the new video. Peace out, and have a great week.